Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be using the Stitched Blooms Dynamics. This is an older die set, but I love this one because it features a lot of different floral and leaf images and all of the dies feature that faux stitching detail. So when we die cut them, we're not only going to get the shape of the flower or the leaf, we're also gonna get that really cool texture with that faux stitching. For the color palette on my card, I've picked out a bunch of different aqua colors as well as green, and I'm also going to mix in a little bit of gray. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can do it with just color cardstock, which is what I'm going to do, or you can use it with white cardstock and color everything in with a coloring medium like colored pencils or markers. I'm also going to be using the Together Forever stamp set, and I love this wishing you a beautiful today and a happy forever, not only because I love the sentiment, but I love the sizing of it because it's going to work perfectly for the design that I had in mind for this card. So the first thing I need to do is I need to die cut all of my flower shapes. So I just leave all of these dies together and I die cut all of them at once. So I'm gonna cut out a bunch of different flowers and leaves and I'm gonna end up with way more than I'm going to need for the actual card, but I like to keep them kind of in a bowl or in a little baggie somewhere in my craft room. And then I always have some flowers or leaves on hand if I need them. So rather than kind of pick and choose without knowing how I'm gonna design the card, I just like to run all of the die cuts right through my die cutting machine at once and then I end up with lots of different options to choose from. I'm using my Big Shot die cutting machine to die cut all of the flowers and leaves and I'm just running them through one at a time with each of the cardstock colors. And then once I have this die cut here, you can see when I remove the dies and you can see the actual die cut pieces, you'll see the little bit of faux stitching detail I was talking about. So some of them have them around the outside edge, some of them have them kind, kind of going up the center of the petals, just different designs on each of them that really adds to the overall look of the finished card. So I'm gonna go ahead and die cut all of the different cardstock colors that I showed at the very beginning of the video and then I'll meet you back here and we will start to assemble our card. Okay, so now we have all of our die cut pieces here. You can see I have lots of them laid out. I have the sentiment stamp that we decided to use on the card and I have a white cardstock panel that measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. Now my idea for this card is I wanna create almost like a wreath design, but I don't want it to be completely closed. I want it to kind of start above the sentiment and finish below the sentiment and then kind of have the sentiment going off on the right hand side and not have any of that wreath detail over on that side. Anytime that I create a wreath, I really like to use a circle template to help me figure out exactly where I need to place everything to make a really nicely formed circle. So for this here, I just took a piece of white cardstock and one of the circle stack circle dies, and I just die cut a circle in the center and used a pencil to draw that template right onto my panel. Now I did it very lightly because I don't want it to show up on the finished card. And I know that I'm going to stamp over on the right hand side like I mentioned before. So I will erase some of that before I stamp out the sentiment because I don't want to stamp the ink directly over the pencil and kind of trap that underneath of there. So now that we have our wreath drawn on there, I've erased a little bit for the sentiment to be stamped and I put the panel into my mini misty stamping tool. And now I'm using some black ink and I'm stamping that sentiment over towards the right hand side a bit. I am using my Misty, which was a good thing here because you can see that I messed up the very top, but because I have it in the Misty, I was easily able to stamp it a second time and I didn't mess up that panel. Now you definitely don't need a Misty to do this. You can use an acrylic block to stamp the sentiment directly onto the panel. So now is kind of the fun part. This is my favorite part of a card like this, is taking all of the different flower and leaf pieces and figuring out where I wanna lay them out on the card. Now this generally takes me a bit of time because I kind of play around with it until I am happy with what I like, but I love the process of kind of experimenting with all of the different pieces and colors and doing a bunch of different layering pieces to create a little bit of dimension as well. So since this does take a bit of time for me to kind of move stuff around, I am going to speed this up quite a bit so that I can leave it in and you can see the process of how I kind of move stuff and took stuff out, but I didn't want to have it go for the next 10 minutes while I arrange all the different flowers and leaves. So you can see I have some tweezers in my hand and I find that helpful with the little pieces when I wanna kind of tuck things underneath. Sometimes I find my fingers kind of get in the way and I kind of push stuff all around and it doesn't really work out that well. So I find the tweezers super helpful to kind of tuck stuff underneath and use some of those smaller little center pieces that I'm kind of experimenting with all of the layering. And I don't have any specific idea for the color. I just know that I wanna kind of include at least one of each of the different colors that I've die cut from. So I just kind of keep grabbing different ones and making sure that I have them spaced out nicely so that we have a really nice blend of the colors and we get a really nice contrasted look when we're finished. 
You can also see as I'm going here that I'm cutting some of the different leaves and flowers with my scissors and that's just so that I can kind of make them fit the space that I want because some of them were a little bit too large but I still wanted to use part of them in the wreath design. And I'm really trying to kind of make it so that it goes in a circular um, design so that we have it kind of tucking around that entire sentiment and fitting the different leaves and flowers. You can see I've used that open space on the left hand side of the sentiment to really tuck those different elements in and make it look like it was all meant to go together. Once I have everything placed onto the panel where I want it to go, what I like to do is just take my phone and take a photo of the finished card so that I kind of know exactly where I want everything to go when I'm starting to adhere it. Because we're gonna need to push all of these pieces off of the panel in order for us to start gluing them on. And I don't wanna forget kind of where I had everything placed. So I just take a really quick photo and then I put that right beside me as I'm putting it back together. And that just helps guide me to figure out where I want everything to go. Now I did move all of the extra pieces kind of off to the side because once I pushed these off of the panel, I didn't want to get them confused with the other pieces and kind of end up with extra pieces that I wasn't sure where they would go. So for the smaller layering pieces, I like to do those first before I start to add the flowers to the panel. So I'm just taking some liquid glue and I'm layering these little small pieces onto this flower first, and then I will adhere the actual flower to the panel. I'm gonna do the same with all of them, except for the ones that I wanna add a little bit of dimension to. So for those ones, I have some little tiny foam squares here and I'm adding them to the center of the flowers, and then I'm layering those pieces on there. I love these specific foam squares because they're thin, so they give you a little bit of dimension, but they're not super raised off of the card, which is exactly what I was kind of going for. I didn't wanna have a lot of height on the flowers, but I did wanna have a little bit of dimension on some of them. So these little foam squares work perfectly for that. So now that I have that done, I go, went ahead and I erased the rest of the circle because now that I have the photo on my card, I can kind of see exactly how I had everything positioned. So I don't need that on there and I won't have to worry about having any of that pencil showing through. So now that I have all of the middle pieces done and I have them all glued together, I'm gonna to go ahead and start to put everything onto the panel. And for this, I'm using that same liquid glue. For some of the larger flowers, I did use regular tape runner adhesive, but I'm not using any dimension on any of these base flowers and leaves. I want everything attached directly to the panel. And then once again, I'm using my tweezers, which I find super helpful to kind of tuck everything underneath, especially with the smaller leaves that are a little bit harder to handle with my fingers. And then once I had all the little flowers and leaves attached, you can see I have those little tiny circles, which would look really cool to be layered in the center of the flowers, but I decided to use them on their own and kind of add them into some of the open spaces around the wreath design. So I just used that same liquid glue and put a little bit on the panel, and then I just used my tweezers to add those little circles directly on top. I am going to end up adding some clear droplets as well, and I'm going to kind of add them in the same areas where I put those little pieces. I just wanted to have a little bit more dimension, and I love the look of the clear droplets anytime I'm using flowers or leaves. Once I have the panel finished, I'm going to add it to a grout gray card base, which is one of the colors that we used in the leaves and the flowers. I really wanted the card base to have a really soft look so that the focus stayed on all of the flowers and leaves that we added to the card front. And then once I have the panel on there, the card is complete except for those um, clear droplets that I am going to add. But you can see all of the great dimension we have by layering some of the center elements. We have all of that faux stitching detail which adds a really cool unexpected look. And we've arranged everything on the card front to fit perfectly around that sentiment stamp. Now I also wanted to do this in a different color combination just to show you that you can use a completely different color palette with the exact same design and even though it's kind of giving the same message it's a completely different look by just changing up the colors. So this one here I use more peachy colors. I use Coral Crush, Persimmon, and Peach Bellini as the main colors and then I use the same grays and greens to do the rest of the wreath. Now for this one I focused a lot more on the darker grays and kind of went with a darker look overall on the wreath design but I really love how both options turned out. So that is our card today. That is going to complete our die cut wreath design that kind of has an open side for our sentiment stamp. I really love custom cards like this where you can kind of make everything look like it was meant to go together. So I hope you got some ideas from this video. All of the supplies I've used are listed in the video description below. I appreciate you being here for another video and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.